be yeah, this screen right here. Okay, just so you all can see, you should have gotten this in an email. Um, and so with this one, we're gonna do some more stuff with what if analysis, like we mentioned before, uh, like we mentioned on Thursday of last week with uh, 3A. Uh, and then question, uh, answering what if questions, uh, which is just using a what if analysis, but you know, copy and pasting that uh, information somewhere so that you could save it uh, as you change the data to be uh, something different. Uh, look at some more uh, charts. So we'll look at a line chart this time. Um, and then that's it. So we'll also insert a picture onto said line chart. That'll be cool. Uh, I showed you all how you can change the, the fill. Uh, of the chart area and the plot area, how they were different settings. So we'll look at that. And then uh, what we saw before was that there was a solid field, a gradient field, a picture field, uh, a picture or texture field, excuse me. And so I told you that, yes, you could insert a picture. So we'll look at what that looks like today. So that's what we're going to be doing. I'm going to put this back on my other side so that you all can see Excel. Uh, and then I can see the instructions as we go through. Um, in regards to homeworks, so I finished going through, uh, so me, start over. I mentioned this in a, another video early on how I do grading. So what happens is I grade everything through an auto grader, uh, and then I take those results, and then I go back through each of your assignments to see if the auto grader picked up something that is correct but said it was wrong, because uh, it can do that based on if you did something differently. Um, and the way that you did it, which is, you know, perfectly fine. Uh, and so I don't take off for that. Uh, I try my best to also uh, add in more detailed on, um, hey, you need to change this thing so that for those of you that submitted it on time, you can go back and make those corrections. Um, so if that's the case, uh, and you see that, please do so. I, I did that for 1A and 1B. Uh, I have to, you, you should have gotten an email saying, hey, uh, uh, grades for 1A and 1B have officially been posted. Uh, so actually, that should have come for Canvas. So I have to do that for 1G, 2A, 2B, and 2G, uh, which in my mind should not take long to do. If I have a no. Uh, um, so let's see. Yes, if you yeah, if you submit stuff in beforehand, yeah. Um, and some of you there there may be times where like, for instance, uh, some of you all um, that are that are that come to class a lot, that come to class a lot, um, you may have especially in the beginning, you accidentally submitted the uh, scripted lectures. So I sent a, I put a comment in saying, hey, send in the correct one. Uh, you accidentally submitted the scripted lecture. Uh, so and that and that pro that was all it was. Like I know you did it, and I know you you did it correctly, but you submitted in the wrong file. Um, and so I just put a note saying, hey, submit, submit the correct one. You know, stuff like that happens and I'll let you know. Uh, if I saw you do it every time, I'd be like, hmm, what's going on here? But um, yeah, I, I know you guys just accidentally submitted the wrong file. So um, I told you to submit the correct one. And sometimes people do that with like the uh, the uh, the starter file, the one that has just like, you know, blank data or not blank data, it has like maybe just the data and then you before you start manipulating. Sometimes people send, submit that and I'm like, Okay, so the correct one. Um, and sometimes it's straight up an accident. Other times um, I've discovered that it was on purpose. And usually when it's on purpose, they never submit anything else. Um, but yes, you all will have full opportunity to uh, go back in those instances. So yes, go back and resubmit it to that same assignment in Canvas. Um, and I'll see it and I'll probably get to it this weekend. Uh, so I can regrade again. Um, but yes, so at that point in time, we should be pretty much caught up then. Um, you also notice that this week, since this is week six, last week was in a week five. After five weeks, uh, the first five weeks, we tend to do a formative evaluation. And it's just to say, hey, how's class going? Uh, um, what do you like about it? What do you not like about it? What things would you like differently? Um, this is usually the point in class where, and this happens every, uh, almost every semester, uh, if things are due on Friday, everyone wants things due on Sunday. If things are due on Sunday, everyone wants things due on Friday. So um, you 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 decide uh, what you want to add in there, and it's it's synonymous. I can't see who said what, 
um, but you automatically get points added to your grade just for completing it. So it's a great way for me to, you know, change things up when we're not even halfway through the semester, um, but when we're like a third of the way through, uh, that way we can um, move forward in a, a better direction. And yes, we do, uh, instructors do look at that. They should just, well, they should look at it. Uh, I do. And I even have, well, like, we're supposed to even do like a summary of all the different things we see for a course that people say, um, and then submit that. Um, so I will look at it and I do make changes uh, based off of what I see. So just so that you are aware. Um, okay. All right, let's see. Let's get into some Excel work. All right. Um, okay, so start off by opening up that script data one and then and save it as a solution. Let's do that. Um, next up, we are going to in cell B4, we're going to type in 2012. Oops. Before I do that, I need to enable editing so I can actually edit. Because this came from online. So 2012, 2013. And of course, at this point in time, I could, oops, I could select both of these guys and use the fill handle to get my pattern. As you all have seen before, notice the screen tip tells me that this is going 2014, 15, and then 16. Got my year taken care of. Uh, and so pretty much what we're doing here is actually a, a very powerful um, uh, way to predict the future. And so what you do is you take your, um, so we know what happened from the year 2012 to 2016. Here are my expenses. And so what we're going to end up doing is we're going to predict based off of an estimated growth rate of 5%. We're expecting for our uh, expenses to grow 5%. We're going to um, figure out what that would look like each year. So based off of what we had in the end here, we're going to figure out what we're going to have moving forward. Uh, we could even possibly figure out a pattern we see here of how much is increasing each time and see what that is moving forward as well. Um, so this is actually something that people do in the real world and every day and get paid big bucks to do it. Uh, this is, this is a, a lower level of what I uh, am learning about doing. So. A cool concept and you can do it in Excel. It's funny actually, I, in my classes we learn about um, two major pro, uh, programming languages uh, in regards to analyzing data uh, and at the end, or not at the end, but throughout like at the end of each week almost they're like oh yeah you could do this in Excel. So uh, which is funny because I know that uh, and sometimes I, I actually think about the program based on how would I do this in Excel. Kind of cool to realize like these high power things that people do or um, at this high level, they end up saying, oh yeah, you could do this, you could do this in Excel. So, all right, so from here, uh, we're gonna go to uh, C6. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna calculate the percent of increase. So we wanna know uh, how much, what, what, what percentage did uh, expenses increase by from 2012 to two, 2013? So in order to calculate that, we're going we're to have a formula. So we're going to be able to equal sign. Okay. And remember that percent is a part of a whole. Part of a whole. Um, so what we want to do is we want to figure out what is the equation that we need to use in order to take um, to do the percent of increase. Remember, it's a part of a whole. And what we're trying to test is to see how much did this increase by to get to here. Okay. I believe we're supposed to have a guest today, so I'm just going to check on that. Um, 
All right. So yeah, so we're gonna get a percent increase. So let's go for and uh look at the formula. I gave it to you. I want you guys to kind of think about how that was derived. So remember, percent is part of a whole. And so we're dividing by B5 because this is what we're trying to test to see how much did this increase by. So this was the whole amount. Well, we want to see how much it increased by. So from here to there, so I really just need to see what is that difference between the two. So from C5 minus B5. So I'm finding out how much did it increase by, and then I'm dividing by that entire amount so I can get the percentage. Okay, so it looks like the person that's supposed to come did not get the invite today. Let's see, let's see this. So, I know we got that. Notice that it has the dollar sign in front. Well, that's because it's in accounting number format. We're talking about percent increases though, right? So um, should this be a percent or should it be dollar signs? Yeah, should be percent. So we're gonna change to percent. At this point in time, you all are probably fully aware about that. We got number here, we're gonna go percent style. There's our percent style. Okay. And now that that's in percent style, when we copy this over, it will the rest of them will also be in percent style. Um, so the reason though that it started off as a dollar sign was because what do we use to calculate it? Well, we use C5 and B5 to calculate um, C6. So it, it used the accounting number formats in order to do a calculation. So it assumed, remember Excel is always trying to help you, it assumed that, oh, does you want this to be in accounting number format as well? But that was not the case. This is also why it's very important for, as you know, I'm, I'll mention this probably every class, but it's very important to take a look at what's going on. Um, and when Excel tries to help you, see if what it did was correct. So now we got it done, we can just copy this over. And if you want to be sure, you can look at the formula inside. So this one took B5 minus C5 divided by C5. And so it is going in the correct format. And so we see our percent increases. Notice that it went 15% and 22%, then just a 2%, but then there's a 51% increase. Um, so based off of what we see here, um, there are certain things that you would do. There's a thing called a, a cumulative sum test. And what you do is you you look for uh, changes or you look for you look for ways to detect when a change occurs. So a change occurs each time, right? But we have a massive change from 22 to two, and then also from two to 51. And so at these years, we would probably say we would probably want to look more at what happened the, these two years for it to drop so much, and then for it to increase so much. And maybe we would find that hey, they actually closed down the beach a lot at this uh, point, or actually, I'm sorry, they didn't close down the beach. Uh, that they were doing construction on the beach at these points. And then this year was the first year they didn't have to do anything. But then some major storm came through and destroyed a lot of stuff. And so then they had to do a bunch more work uh, because these are expenses and for maintenance and improvements at the beach. Okay, So maybe we do some research and we see why that is happening. But these should pop out at you as hmm, something major happened here uh, just because of the, the big drop and then the big increase. Um, this is also an increase, but I would say it's not significant. If you were the person doing this, you might say, no, 7%, I'm, I'm worried about why do we have to have a 7% increase in how much uh, we're spending on this beach? So, okay. Uh, any questions about the percent increase, how it's calculated or why we calculated it? Cool. All right, so um, next, it says for us to use the format painter. So I believe we've demonstrated the format painter before. 
let's take a look to see uh, how the flat painter works and what it's used for. So, um, so the format painter is this guy here in the, in the home tab in the clipboard group, format painter. And what it does is it's just like copy uh, and paste, except you're not copying the data that's there. You're only copying the format that the data currently has, and you're going to paste that same format on another cell. And so that's what this is all about. Um, you even get a nice little screen tip to tell you how to get started with it and how to use it. Um, you can apply multiple formats by uh, double clicking on this when you do so. Um, so let's take a look at this though. So we want to use Format Painter and copy the formats from a from cell A2. To cell A8. So I'm going to copy this format. Well, what is this format? Let's just take a look at the format, what it is right here. So we got heading one style, right? It's been merged and centered. It's bold. It's 15. It's a uh, calibre. It's uh, centered. It also has a bottom alignment. So when we do a format painter here, I'm then going to go to cell A1, click on that. Lo and behold, what happened to it? It's bold, calibre 15. It's a centered, bottom alignment, merged and centered. Cell style is also now heading one. So if you ever have uh, something, a, a style that you want to copy, this is how you would do it. You would use Format Painter. Uh, I use Format Painter a lot within my, uh, my projects within Excel. The reason is because a lot of times my data is being copied and pasted from another location or it's being brought in from uh, another type of file, and it may keep the source formatting. So I want the format to be the same all the way throughout for all my data. So the first stuff that I, I may have changed at the beginning, or it may have a certain style and I like it, I will select that, use Format Painter, and then go select everything else so that everything will have the same format throughout. Uh, so very common tool that I, I, that I personally use. Um, format Painter is within your, uh, your Word as well. You can do this in Word if you, for those of you that use Word in your Office applications as well. So very powerful tool. I, I say more, more so for Excel, just in the fact of when you have to copy and paste stuff um, and you want things to look the same. OK. Um, OK. So uh, now we want to copy cell F5 and paste it in B13. So here's my F5. This is my expenses for 2016. And I'm going to put it in B13. Notice that that year is also 2016. So I'm going to copy and paste that. Okay. All right. So we're going to do some more calculations here. So for cell C13, what we want to do is we want to um, look at our projective expenses. And so I mentioned before, that our projected expenses uh, is us like predicting what the expenses is going to be like in the future, right? So we know now this is what this is what they actually look like for these five years. Now we want to project what is it going to look like for the next five years with an estimated growth rate of five percent. And so maybe this is like where we're comfortable with. Um, maybe we're like five percent is okay. If it goes more than that, that's a problem. And so that's maybe we freaked out with these guys here, you know, with seven percent the drop. Uh, we were probably like happy with, but then this guy here, we were like, whoa, what happened? Uh, so, um, but what we're going to do is we're going to create this estimate of this increase. And so there's a couple of different formulas you could use to do so, but I gave you one. Um, so I do want to talk about how do we get there. So to see what an increase, of, uh, an estimated growth rate would look like, so an increase in growth rate, we want to look at what is it originally, which is in B13. And we want to multiply that times uh, itself or, or times one. So you'll notice in there I put 100% because 100% is the same as one whole, right? So I want 100% of this guy. But I want to also add to that this 5% increase because I'm, I'm expecting it to go up by that 5%, right? And so if I do that, I get my value here. So beforehand, remember how it changed automatically to a counting number format because the uh, values that were being used to calculate it were or accounting number format. 
This gave us no format. Why is that? The items used to calculate it were accounting and percent. Excel's not sure how to help us here. Okay. So we'll have to we'll have to correct that later. But um just once again, the way we did our um, growth increase was by taking how much we had originally times 100% because we want it to stay at least 100% of the same thing, right? Plus the increase that we're going to have, the 5% increase. Okay, so each of these is getting multiplied by that um, B13. Okay, and there's tons of different ways for you to do this. Um, all right, so I'm going to press enter again. And I'm now going to drag this over. What do you guys think is going to happen? Is it going to copy the formula over? Is it going to cause an error? These are kind of things that you should think about. So I'm going to drag it over. And I get an error. It may not seem like an error, but we got the exact same thing each time. Why? Well, let's take a look and see. It got C13 times 100% plus C10. C10, there's nothing in C10. So that's zero. So it just stays it's, it's times itself, times 100% or times one. And so the next one did the same thing. Previous one times one. And the next one, same thing. The previous one times one because that's zero. There's nothing there. What did I do wrong in here? I did something wrong. What was it that I did wrong? Anyone got any ideas? The dollar sign, maybe? No. Yeah. That's, the dollar sign. that's right. The dollar signs. We need to have make this an absolute reference so that it autom it always refers back to B10 as we move over. We don't want there's nothing else being used over here. So we want it to just refer to B10. So I'm gonna use F4 on my computer. You can put the dollar signs in directly by just typing them in, um, or you may have to use the function key F4, uh, whichever one you have to do. Make that change there, and then I'm going to go back and drag this now. There we go. Now we got some nice little increases. Okay. All right. So now that that's taken care of, we're going to use the format painter. And I know I'm doing this a little differently, um, but I want to show you how you can do multiple ones at one time. Please do that again. Yes, I can. Go back. All right. So, uh, oh, okay, let's go back again. There we go. Okay. So, uh, we noticed that we had an issue when we copied over. Remember, whenever you copy things over, uh, it's a relative reference. That means right now we're in column C. Everything in the equation refers to B. That means when we move over to D, everything is going to refer back to C. When we move over to E, everything is going to refer back to D. And so it's relative to wherever we started from. Okay. So the uh, issue is that when we do so, there's nothing in C, C10, D10, E10. Okay. So D, the rest of these are going to be wrong because they're not referring to any numbers. They're, they're gonna have zeros there. We want all of these to refer back to B10. And so to do that, you make B10 an absolute cell reference by pressing F4 or typing in the dollar signs in front of the B and in front of the 10. And so you're saying that as I copy this over, yes, this B13 will become C13 and then D13 and then E13. But this B10 is gonna stay B10 every time I copy it over. So that's the difference between a relative cell reference and an absolute cell reference. Once we do that, we can now officially copy this over. And these, you'll notice they got updated correctly. You have B10 stays the same, B10 stays the same, and B10 stays the same. Okay. How's that? Good. 
All right. So uh, now we know that we have an issue, not issue, but things don't look nice, right? It's a county number format everywhere else, but it's not down here. So let's make it so. So I'm gonna take the format painter, but I'm gonna double click on it. By double clicking on it, it allows me to say, ooh, I want this one, I want this one, and I want these guys. So I could click on multiple things and the, the notice the border here has not gone away. By double clicking on format painter, it's, it allows me to click on multiple items to change before I say I'm done. And when I'm done, I can just click escape. And then I'm I'm out of that cell or I'm out of that um that function. I'm no longer stuck to format painting. Okay. So do that again. So I'm gonna oops. All right, so I'm going to double click on Format Painter, and that allows me to click in multiple places to make that change. I just want to show you all how to do that. Um, in case you ever need to change multiple places at a time, you want to double click on Format Painter in order to do so. Okay. And when you're done, you can press Escape, and it will escape out of that functionality. Okay. All right, cool. So do we have any questions at this time? about our estimated growth calculations in Format Painter. All right, how about? Next up, we go to A15 here. We're gonna do some more. Um, in A15, what we're gonna do is we're gonna type in estimated increase, oops, yeah, there it is. Increase in expenses 2016 to 2020. And we're gonna use the format painter to take this. So we get that same kind of style. We have a heading one here, heading one here, heading one here. And uh, it asks us to then apply to A10, B10, to apply a certain fill color. So where are our fill colors? Uh, I don't believe we technically have done this yet, but I know I've shown it in the earlier weeks because it's one of those um, basic 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 things that are important to know within excel how to change the fill color some people think of as the background color of the cell well it's in the home tab in the font group and we have our theme colors here and you have your standard colors your standard colors are like red dark red orange yellow so they'll have names that you're used to the theme colors will have um have some color names but then they'll have like a something afterwards, like something that says accent one, this one says like text two. So that applies, there's a text one somewhere uh, and things like that. So um, what we're gonna do here is we are going to select blue accent one, but then it says a lighter 60%. So these go from lighter to darker. So lighter 80, 60, I believe it's 40, right? Yeah, then it goes to darker 25 and then darker 50. So, but we need uh, blue accent one, lighter 60 percent and notice how i'm using the screen tip to find that um i kind of remember where certain things are because i've been doing this uh for a while but i don't ever expect to permanently have it in my brain i hope not i feel like there's much more useful things especially because the screen tip will just tell me what the name of it is so don't feel like you have to memorize where those are if you do then great you will probably i'm sure someone would pay you to to take care of stuff for them because you know where everything is uh, but yeah, I used to use the screen tip. All right, so A17 through A19, we're gonna type in a couple of things. We're gonna type in our year. And we're gonna type in our 5% growth rate. And we're gonna type in our 2% growth rate. Excellent. Day. All right, then we're gonna take our, uh, 
Yep. Sorry, you keep hearing that ding noise. That's uh, saying that my computer needs updates from IT, which it just got back from there. So, um, and it won't seem to go away. Just let me know. You know, I said, okay, I know. Um, all right. So what we're going to do is we're going to take B12, F12, and we're going to paste it to uh, B17. So B12, F12, because once again, we're taking estimated, oops, got to misspell increase. estimated increase in expenses from 2016 to 2020. So that means I want from 2016 to 2020. Could I just uh, type that out again? I could, but this way I keep the formatting. Okay. And in all honesty, I probably personally would have just kept this whole thing so that way it keeps the formatting all the way across. But I don't want this to appear as, just a, as if it's a column header. So this looks a lot better. Um, all right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to copy B13 to F13. And I'm going to tell you why. What we calculated up here just now was the estimated, uh, the projected expenses if the estimated growth rate is 5%. Down here, we say estimate estimated increases in expenses from 2016 to 2020. Look at this one. This one's for a 5% growth rate. That's what we just calculated up here. So therefore, I'm going to copy this and I am going to paste it here because this is the information we already wanted. It's already there. Now, in doing so, there's a couple of things that we're gonna we're gonna paste this a little differently. Okay. So I am going to instead of just doing like Control V, I'm gonna click this paste button here. And there's a reason for it because if I were to copy that now. It would actually put the um, the formulas that we use to calculate those. I don't want the formulas. I just want the values. That's all I want here. I just want the values um, that are already calculated. So what I and there's a there's a really good reason for this because if if this ever got changed here, this value for five percent, all of these values would change. If I kept the um, formulas down here. Then it won't represent 5% anymore. It will represent whatever uh, is up here. So to prevent that from happening, I'm just going to paste the values. Okay. So, um, so I'm going to click on paste values. Here is usually uh, where I would go if I want to just paste the values. I'm, I'm sure that makes sense to many of you. So I have a couple options. I have just the values. Notice that it has no formatting in our preview when I look down here. No formatting. I want to keep the formatting up. And the other option is the source formatting. Okay. Uh, honestly, between these two in this instance, it really will not matter. Um, I'm going to select values and number formatting. The reason for that is just that it's uh, so it can stick to that. So there we go. Now those values have been pasted. All right, I'm gonna click escape. Well, now we wanna find out what's the growth rate, the, uh, what's the projected expenses for growth rate of 2%. So I could go and do another formula thing just like I did for this guy for 5%, or the fact that this is based off of 5%, if I just change this to 2%, everything automatically updates. But look down here, the 5% did not change because I pasted the values instead of pasting the formulas. Okay. Well, that means I can just take these values, copy, and paste them again here, right? I'm going to paste again the values. So if I wanted to, now I could change this to another number. I could leave it 2%. Uh, I think in, when you guys do 3B, I think it tells you to change it back to the 5%. I'm not 100% sure on that. Or what, not 5%. I think you guys said like 12 and 21 or something. Um, but just make sure you follow that instruction. 
completely. It may tell you to change it back. It may not. I, feel, I think it does. Um, in this case, I'm just going to leave it as 2%. Uh, if I wanted to change this to look like something else, I could do that to you. Yeah. All right. Any questions about um, pasting values versus just paste as normal or um, the growth rate? All right, so next up, we are going to go to the page layout tab. And we are going to go to the themes group. And it already has a theme. I'm just going to hover over this so you see. Current theme is office theme. But we're going to change the colors. Maybe we don't like all this blue. And we're going to change the colors to be based off of red. When we do so, notice how everything has more of a red feel to it to start off. Even the font of these guys has changed a little bit. I don't know if you all can tell on your screens uh, for mine, but it does change. It may have seen just black before, but it's not. Or it may seem black now, but it's not really. Just a hint of it. All right. <clears throat> Sorry. So what we're going to do now is we're going to select rows 8 through 24, it says. The reason I'm doing this is because I want to insert multiple rows at the same time. In fact, I would like to have about 17 rows. And this is 17 rows that I just selected. And so I'm going to insert 17 rows. So uh, I'm going to go to the insert, uh, sorry, I'm going to go to the home tab. I'm going to go to the sales group. I'm going to click insert. Of course, I could have right clicked and click insert as well. Um, but I'm going to click insert. And remember, when you insert something, it always goes before what you have selected. So those 17 go before we had selected up here. Now, when we do that, remember, as we saw before, that it will copy down the format that we had beforehand uh, or what's above it. We don't want that. We just want a plain, clear format. So when you paste, you sometimes get these insert options here. It looks like a paintbrush here. What this means is this just allows you to change the format that it got. So right now, it's set to same as above. You can do the same as below. I'm In this instance, I'm going to clear do clear formatting so that it's just standard. How it normally would look is if I had just had brand new cells uh, and I just opened it up for the first time. So that is how you can make that change if you ever need to make that change. If you want it to have the same formatting as below, by default, it takes the same formatting as above. Uh, but you can change that as you can see now. All right, cool. Any questions at this point in time? All right. We will keep on going then. All right, so uh, it says at the top of the worksheet to select ranges A5 through F5. And what we're going to do is we're going to insert a new chart based off of these expenses. So the actual expenses we know from 2012 to 2016. So I'm going to insert some expenses. And to do so, I'm going to insert a um, stacked line with markers chart. So we're in the insert tab. I'm going to the charts group. I know I'm, I want to do some type of line chart. So this is the only one that has lines with it. So insert line or area chart. I'm going to click the drop down there and see what is available. So I have a line. I have a stacked line, which sounds close to what we want, but we want a stacked line with markers. 100% stack line, a line with markers, stacked line with markers. There it is. So I'm going to choose the stacked line with markers chart now. It has been inserted in here. 
I am going to drag the upper left hand corner of this to cell A. So I'm just putting it inside of that cell. See that upper corner is inside of cell A8. That's just so it has some type of location. Um, does this really matter how like perfect you get this? No. Um, and I, I give those points back. Oh, could I explain that again? The uh, the uh, insert, inserting of the blank rows or the chart? The blank rows. The blank rows? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. So I want to, I'm going to, really, this is all for me to insert a chart. But I need some room to be here for me to insert this chart. And right now, there's all this, uh, there's only like one blank row here. Well, I want to insert 17 rows so I can have enough room to insert this chart. So I select the 17 rows. So 8 to 24. That'll be 17 rows. If you're not sure how, they, how that's calculated, if you subtract these two numbers and then add one more, they'll tell you how many rows you have selected. So 24 minus 8, 16, plus one more because we have to include the, that first row. That's how we get 17. And so I'm going to insert um, some rows before it. Well, because 17 are selected, when I click insert, it's going to insert 17 uh, before it. So I'm just going to click insert here. So we have 17 new rows that have been inserted. Everything else got pushed down, right? Because remember when you use insert something, it goes before what's selected. Now, whenever you insert anything, it will always look, it will always look, say, hey, what's before me? Because I'm going to assume that this is the formatting that I should have because Excel's trying to help you. Well, when you do that, you'll see a, a little paintbrush like this. Notice how, how it looks similar to the format painter that we saw before. That's because it has to do with formatting. So when you insert something, you have an option to say, keep the same formatting as above, which is by default what it does. Keep the same formatting as what's below. Or I can say, just clear the formatting completely. So it'll be just like blank cells. We won't have anything that has, you know, county number format or percent format automatically or anything like that. So I'm going to choose clear formatting so it's completely blank. Because what am I going to do here? I'm about to insert a chart. I don't want to have anything in the background like if we had said like same as below, we would have something that had heading one style and merge behind it. So there'd be a line behind it randomly. That's going to look weird. Um, so we want I want this to be completely clear. Okay. Does that does that make sense? So what I'm going to do now is I'm going, oh, you're quite welcome. That's what I'm here for. I'm going to take, um, I'm going to take A5 through F5, and I'm going to insert a stacked line marker chart. So as I showed you all before, that's in the charts group under the insert tab. I click my drop down. It's this guy over here, stacked line with markers. And I'm just going to drag it to be inside of A8. The left corner is inside of A8. I don't have to be perfectly precise. I'm just putting it there. It makes it easier to locate, too. Um, so with that done, um, oh, one thing I will say, because I, I, I've said this before, as I, I said it earlier, too, how I'm not going to, if you have this a little bit off, like it's an A7 a little bit, or if it's like a little bit of A9 or whatever, I'm not going to like take off for that. I said that before and someone just like inserted the chart and like notice how it was covering up this stuff before. They're like, oh, he doesn't care where it goes. I do care. It should make sense where you put it, right? We, it, it's going to go below here because it's going to, this applies to this. You need to be able to see it. If I put it to the side of it, yeah, that applies to it. You can see that, but it may not fit on the page, right? Whenever you print it out. Like Sandra was having issues earlier with the dotted line that she saw for the page break. This may not show up there uh, if I put it on the side of it. So below it is nice. 
and then it, it's, it'll be nice to see above the rest of the information that we're doing or using. So uh, with that done, I'm now going to uh, change the chart title from expenses. It got expenses because this was called expenses. Um, but I'm going to change this to be, um, ooh, I messed that up there. Calder City Beaches 2012 to 2016. There we go. And I'm actually going to uh, apply. So I just I selected the the uh, text that's in here, and I'm going to make it bold. And I'm also going to change the font color to a uh, dark red, as per instructed. Now it kind of matches more of that whole red theme that we've had. All right, so um, I am going to I want I want to change some of this up a little bit. Um, because when you look at this, you can say, oh, okay, yeah, this is um, called your city. There's one, two, three, four, five. What is one, two, three, four, five? What is that? Well, one, two, three, four, five is really these years, right? But we didn't select those, so I probably should change this up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select these numbers down here, one, two, three, four, five. And I'm going to right-click on it. Notice that when I'm hovering over it, it says it's the horizontal category axis, because that's exactly what it is. I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to choose select data. This allows me to change the data that uh, was is used to calculate what this is. Okay. So notice here it says horizontal category axis labels, which is what we saw down here. It said horizontal category axis when we hovered over it. So it just has label one, two, three, four, five because we didn't give it anything before. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click edit. And I'm going to say, you are actually B4 to F4. And it tells me, oh, that's 2012, 2013, and so on. I click OK. It now says 2012 to 2016. Look here, 2012, 2013, 14, 15, 16. So now my chart looks exactly how it looks more like it should. And it can explain more of what's going on. OK. Click OK. So we saw how beforehand you needed to select uh, all that, everything that you needed for your chart before you uh, inserted it. And this way you can see how can you modify it if you make a mistake. You can just do select data and see do you need to change this or do you need to change this stuff. All right, so uh, it now asks us to, uh, with the horizontal axis still selected. Oh, I, I think I uh, misspelled that word on your uh, on your sheet. Should be axis, not not access. Axis. Uh, correcting it on the master one right now. All right, so with that still selected, we're going to display the format axis pane. Um, so I'm going to select this guy again here, and I want this format axis pane to show up. Notice it's already here. We'll say it wasn't. If I wanted this to show up, I can double click here. I also, with it selected, can go to the format um, contextual tab, go to the current selection group. You see the format select button? That brings it up to you. So uh, whatever you have something selected, you can always go to, um, in, uh, in a chart, you can always go to the Format Contextual tab, Current Selection Group, and click that to bring op open the um, Format Task Pane. You can also select from here through this dropdown. This will have every element of the chart. All right. So next with this uh, Format Pane here, we were asked to click the fill in line. Remember, that's the paint bucket. And it says, if necessary, 
So under the field, uh, under the line option, says if necessary, select the no line option. And close the format pane. So let's try to see what did that do. Now we have no excuse me, we have no line. It was pretty much automatically set up that way. But remember, automatic will change based off of a theme or default settings on, on a machine. So you want if you want it to truly have no line, you can tell it to have no line. All right. Okay, so now that we format this axis, let's format this one because Yes, we can see that things are starting a little bit underneath 6 million, right? Which we know from the data too. Is the rest of this really necessary to see then? You know, for it to start at uh, zero and go up. Is it necessary for this to go up by 2 million each time? Possibly. How about we change some of that? So I'm going to click on this and I'm going to open up the format access from it. So I'm just going to double click. And then with the access options selected right now, which came up, that's where our, uh, what looks like a column chart is. I'm gonna change this axis. Notice that we have options for bounds and units. There are a couple of different things as well that are available, tick marks, the type of tick marks you can have, the type of labels you can have. Um, we're going to change the minimum value. Right now it's set to zero. That means that this, it starts at zero. Notice the lowest value on here is zero. So we're going to change that. We're going to change that to our 4 million. The reason for that is because when we look at this right now, 4 million would make more sense to start at, right? We can have that way you can see this a little better. And then the maximum value, we're going to leave it the same. So it goes up to that 14 million. In the major box under units, this tells us how much we're counting it up by. Uh, I'm going to tell it to go back to what it was. Count up by twos. So this allow this kind of zoomed in the image a little bit, so we can see it a lot better. Go back to what that looked like. And so we we changed the minimum to four million. We told it to go up by uh, two million each time. All right. Any questions about changing those axes? Okay. Let's make some more changes to our little chart here. So uh, next up, we're going to change the chart area. So I'm selecting the white space on the outside here or within the chart. Notice it says format chart area here. Again, if I was not sure, I could do it from the format contextual tab, the current selection group, click my drop down and say chart area. Okay. Uh, when if the pane's already open, you can also make changes from here. Oops. All right, chart options. Say, oh, that's the part I want to look at, chart area. Okay. All right, so how are we changing the chart area? I kind of mentioned it earlier in class. We're going to change the fill. So I'm going to fill in, uh, fill in line. And under fill, I'm going to add a picture. So I'm going to go to uh, picture or texture fill. It automatically puts a texture that's default. I'm going to say, no, I don't like that. I'm going to go choose a file. And you all were given one. Which is kind of uh, you all were given one. I think your scripture lecture that I sent to you. So here's my image. It's that same beach because you know we're we're dealing with Calder City Beach, so it makes sense for us to have that beach there. Okay. All right. With that done, let's add a nice little border to the outside of this uh, chart area. So how about we take a solid line border? And as we get one, it's automatically kind of reddish, which makes sense, right? Our whole theme color is red. 
We're sticking with that. Well, let's tell it to definitely have dark red here. So I'm going to choose dark red, just like the title is dark red. And I'm going to increase the width of this guy. I'm going to make it um, three point. So it's more obvious to people what's here. I'll get that nice thick border around it. And I'm going to tell it to have at the bottom here. You notice it says rounded corners. So these corners are um, 90 degree angles, so they're straight, pointy. We have rounded corners on our border. So it's a little nicer. Personally, I would never use rounded corners. I'm a straight edge kind of guy. No. But yeah, if you ever want to do rounded corners, this is how you would do so. So it's at the very bottom, probably because no one likes it. Um, but no, it's at the very bottom of the borders. Uh, there's a couple other things that you'll usually find at the bottom. And again, they're usually things that are not used a lot. Um, all right. So questions about formatting the chart area? Okay. All that's left to do is to format that plot area and these little grid lines here. Remember, the plot area is different from the chart area. Notice we have the plot area selected. It is literally where the plot of the graph and information goes. So um, we are going to um, click on chart elements. The plus sign here. And you see we have grid lines. I'm going to click here to give more options. We're going to change these little lines here. Notice that they are now selected. We're going to change those guys because it can be kind of hard to see on the picture, right? Uh, and we want to keep our theme of red going for the color. So uh, we're going to make these grid lines. Oops, I did something on accident just now. Okay. Uh, we're going to make these grid lines solid lines. Notice they automatically change to red, again, keeping with that color theme of red. Um, and we are going to say, no, they are going to have to be dark red. <gasps> they already are. Yay, caught on. Yeah. So we want to change the width of these, though, make them a little thicker. Again, because of the picture in the background, so it's easier to see. We'll do 1.5. They are major thick. Um, and now we are going to change the... Uh, these values here because we can't see these now. So we're gonna actually change both axes because we can't see either one. So uh, what I'm gonna do actually for these though is I'm going to right click and I'm gonna change the font directly. I could do it from in here uh, with the colors, but notice that this is the fill color. This is the lines. I would have to go to um, these guys here within the text to make changes. Um, so, but honestly, the easiest way when you're just looking at text here is to just go to font. You can even do it from the home tab if you wanted to. Just make sure that the right stuff is selected. Um, so we're gonna make this, let's see, let's make this bold. And let's change the color to dark red like we did for everything else. And I am going to click OK. And so now it's a little easier to see. And we're going to do the same thing down here. Um, come on, my guy. There we go. I'm going to change you to dark red. And I'm going to make you bold. Right. So now everyone can see everything. Personally, I think we probably should maybe decrease the width of these uh, grid lines because notice how it's kind of hard to see that change here on this point. But it's uh, it's fine for right now. So now what I'm going to do is we only have one sheet here. So I'm going to go to my page layout on tab. I'm going to launch the page setup, setup dialog box. So we can change some things. Notice that it's already in landscape. So the margins, I'm gonna center things horizontally. Oh no, I can't do that. Why is that? So I had people ask me this uh, a couple weekends ago. 
So the reason that is is because the chart is what's currently selected. So if I want to change the entire sheet, I need to make sure I don't have a chart selected only. So now I can go to page set a dialog box. Now I'll notice that this is portrait. Because the sheet was in portrait, the chart was in landscape, which is very confusing for people when they, if they have the chart selected, they think that, what are you talking about, Mr. Stevens? Everything should work perfectly fine. I do have the sheet selected. No, and this can be an indicator of that by default is usually in portrait, your sheet, unless you actually change it. So if you ever have a chart selected, it'll say landscape um, because it, it tries to keep it widescreen. All right, because that's the standard nowadays. So in margins, we're going to do what we usually do, horizontally centered on the page. We're going to go to header footer. You all know what we're doing, custom footer. We are inserting the sheet name to the left section. So all that's left now is to go to this guy over here, add some tags, and we're going to type beaches. And of course, you can make sure your name and everything's there, which I am here. And there's that dotted line that you may have seen before. Uh, I think, Sandra, you were talking about a dotted line. Is this the dotted line that you kind of saw before? Yes, okay. Yeah, so exactly that's what I was uh, talking about before about that being the page break. That's exactly what that is. That means that anything that goes on, that's over past it is going to be on page two. Okay, so like I'm just going to put something over here so you can see. And I'm going to go to print preview so that you can see what this looks like. So notice on it says now we have two pages. Look, everything's there because it was on the left side of that first dotted line. When I go over here, page two. So that's what that dotted line is. It's your page break. So I'm going to get rid of that because we don't want a page two. We want everything on one page. And so why is that? Uh, it automatically sets that up. So uh, right here, notice scale to fit is set to automatic, automatic. Um, so it automatically fits that to fit whatever it thinks it should, the way it should. Based off the pixels too, in the column list, they'll do that. I can make it so that everything fits with Y. So I could say all the data should fit 100% on one page, which there it is. Everything's going to fit one page here. Um, it's completely up to you. And you'll notice in a lot of projects in the future, we do make this change ourselves. Make it ourselves. So um, yeah. So you can always make that change. But um, the dotted line appears usually when you go to print so you can see how something looks like. Uh, you're welcome. We'll also see later in the future that we can directly change that by switching it to page break view. Literally, you see here, you literally see that border around it. That's the page break. So if we wanted to increase it, we could just like click on it and then drag it over and then column G would not be a part of it. Um, but right now, this is perfect. Everything is completely encompassing here. All right, cool. Well, that's 3B and we are about one class day ahead of schedule now. Why is not in the middle? Why is the chart not in the middle? Um because we didn't we didn't put it, we didn't put it there. We put it into begin in cell A8. Now, um, so what Chris is just pointing out is the chart probably will look better in the middle, right? So what a lot of people would do at this point, honestly in uh, real real life would actually maybe increase this a little bit, such as this. So it fills out more of that area. Um, or they would say, you know what? I want it to actually be here. So that would be completely up to you. But that's, that's why, uh, because we are centering the page horizontally onto the page. 
So that means everything here has to be centered horizontally on the page. Um, and you saw you could not do that with the chart, right? When I go to page lay layout with the chart selected, it doesn't allow me to say, hey, chart, I'm going to put you horizontally on the page. Everything that's here needs to be centered on the page because that's how it works with the margin. So if you wanted to move the chart after that, you could do that. And in your assignment, if it, uh, yeah, in your assignment, if I, if I, if it tells you to uh, put it in a certain spot, and you're like, I think this looks better over here. Just put it in the comments so I know that hey, they thought ahead and said, no, I don't like this. I think this is gonna look better. All right. Well, are there any questions about um, format painter and different formats that you? Because really, it's main, most, mainly what we did was I have no, I have a problem to use a. Okay. So uh, when I try to use the format painting, yeah, I, I lost myself because of this. I try to do that for the, you know, after the space we gave you for the um, charge. Mm -hmm. And when I try to, to do the, to the format thing, to put in then like, you know, the estimate increase in expense in 2016, 2020. Uh -huh. I don't know why, because this only copy the format. The only the for, not the data, you know what I mean? Yes, it's, it's only format painter should only copy the format, not the data. Yeah, but like uh, you know the numbers, like uh, the the numbers, like uh, you need. Ah, okay. Now I understood. Now I, I need to type. This is the problem. Type the number and then uh, use the fill handle. Now I understood what happened here. So thank you. You're welcome. Uh, questions about the chart and the modifications we made to it. Uh, you'll see this probably in, in another one in the future, but many times if you insert a picture, what generally looks best is that you make the, the picture very transparent, so almost kind of clear to see through. And then there, that way the text on the outside, you make it very, very dark. Uh, so most people will do like dark text, black, or something like that. Um, or I should say black, like it's like black text one, I think is what it's called. People will do that so it stands out even more. Uh, but it all depends on the picture that you have. So the picture is mostly blue. So red is a good uh, contrast to that. So that's why we're using red. Plus the whole theme's red. Oh, okay. If there are no other questions, Oop, I lost a step for the lines inside of the chart. Uh, so these grit lines, yeah. So they can be honestly, they can be kind of difficult to get to. So um, if you click on them, you should be able to get the, like right here it says format major grit lines. Uh, if you were unable to see that, you would have to, if you go to the contextual tab for format, go to the current selection group, just drag it down and look for the grid lines. That's what those are called, grid lines. And once you have that, then you can make your modifications to them. So we want them to be solid lines. So I click solid. My looks like a square. So your, uh, what looks like a square? Your, your border or what? what, what looks like a square? inside the chart, like what's selected, like this guy right here. Okay, yeah, that, that's a, that's because the plot area is selected. So if I want to select the major, the grid lines, like I said here, probably to, to me the easiest way is just to go to the format tab, current selection group, and just click this drop down and look for what it is you want to select. 
So in this case, I want to select major axes. Now they're each one of those is selected. Yes, I could go and literally click on one. I might have to like double or triple click to get to it, but I could do that too. Um, and once those are selected, we just changed the color to dark red, I believe it was. Yeah. I made it solid and then changed the width to 1.5. So um, be very careful what you have selected. Uh, I, I, I mentioned this last week too, with, especially with the chart area and plot area. People sometimes will think that, yeah, I selected the chart area, but it clearly will say plot area up here. And when they hover over a certain section, it'll say that too. You want to make sure you're in the right, you have the right thing selected. So this tells you what's selected. If you're in the format contextual tab, it'll tell you what's selected too. Okay, so just be very careful with that. You're welcome. Bye. Okay, bye. All right. So, yeah. Um, all right. If no one else has any other questions, uh, class ended two minutes ago. So, um, you all are free to go on Thursday. Uh, I'll leave it open for questions for 3A and 3B. Um, and 3G doesn't start to next week, but if you guys are comfortable with that, we can go ahead and start looking at 3G. Uh, so I'll, I'll first leave it open for 3A, 3B. You all let me know what you want to do for that um, on Thursday. You'd be like, yeah, let's go ahead and do 3A, 3B. Let's do 3G. Let's go for it. Or if you say no, that's enough. <laughs> so, all right. I'll see you all Thursday. Uh, Tabitha, did you have anything? Or?